Flint corn, also known as Indian corn, is a colorful decoration and a nutritious food. On this episode of Eat Wyoming, Diane Sines and Kent Willis show us how to make Indian corn part of a healthy autumn meal. It's autumn, and this time of year I see a lot of this really nice decorative corn around. Yeah, it's got a lot of color. Did you know you can actually eat this? It's a flint corn, an Indian corn, a lot of times blue corn, but it's totally edible. So this, this whole grain stuff with all this color is going to have the other parts of the grain still inside of there and have lots of vitamin E, B vitamins, fiber, phytochemicals, and, and things in there that you won't get from processed grains. And we're going to make a cornbread out of it. So in, in this bowl, we have cornmeal, mainly cornmeal, a little bit of flour. Whole grain flour. Whole grain flour. Also, just the wet ingredients, the egg, the oil, the buttermilk, salt, and all that stuff. For the full recipe, refer to our publication, Baking at High Altitude. Really good, especially if you're new to the area and don't really know how to bake at altitude. And this is the southern style cornbread. Right. I kind of got inspired this weekend by, um, by a neighbor. We were harvesting honey, and she made cornbread with apples. So I thought, whoa. So why do we care that it's actually a high altitude? Our baked goods are going to turn out a little bit differently than they would at sea level, and so we have to make a few adjustments to our recipes. To, to help them turn out the way we want. So the altitude has something to do with like, you know, less oxygen and, and less pressure? or Less atmospheric pressure. Less you atmospheric bet. pressure, okay. Yeah. And so that influences the liquid content, right? So when you're baking at high altitude, bump up the temperature a bit, I believe 25 degrees, or you can cut back on the liquid a bit. With these recipes from the baking, in the baking at high altitudes, they've, they've all been tested in uh, between 5,000 and 7,000 feet. So that's all been kind of taken care of for you. And you know, we're using the, the Indian corn interchangeably. So whenever you see for cornmeal, you can just use, use the Indian corn. And it actually has a richer flavor. Um, than your, your general store-bought cornmeal. Very uh, appealing to the eye, also to the stomach, you know, for the taste, and to, to the body with the, all the flavonoids that you're getting. So what a bonus. Great, well, let's throw these in the oven and pull them out in 25 minutes and we'll call it good. Looks great. Great. Diane and Kent have shown us how to bake Indian cornbread at high altitude. While the bread is in the oven, Tina Russell visits Mill Creek Miracles to find out how Indian corn is grown in Wyoming. This morning I'm standing here with Kathleen and Tim Thomas, and we are just outside of Ethity, Wyoming on the Wind River Indian Reservation. So Tim, can you tell us, what do you have planted here? Oh, we have some uh, flint corn and some silver sweet corn and also some Amish popcorn that we tried this year. So can you tell us, kind of start to finish, what's the process of getting the corn in the ground, harvesting, and then what do you do with it when, when it's ready to harvest? Yeah, well, we do a lot of prep work the year before and then get it ready in spring with some amendments from uh, horse manure or sheep manure, and then we decide which variety of corn that we're going to uh, plant. Okay. Do we want to look at some of the varieties that you have here? Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the growing season and how they all turn out? Sure. Okay, let's walk over here, check them out. Okay, this is what they call the, um, the flint corn. It's actually a, an Indian corn. And this, it, it takes like 180 days. Wow. That's an Amish popcorn that we grew that's, uh, it comes in yellow and red and uh, other different, comes in the flint colors. So do you do processing on this? Do you dry them? Pull the husk back and sun dry them and then uh, peel them off by hand to put them in a, a container and uh, um, let it dry. Put a piece of um, newspaper in the top to help take the moisture out mm -hmm. and it's good for a few years like that. Oh wow, that's a long time. 
That's a dent corn. It's a, a silver uh, and yellow corn. Is this what we know as sweet corn? Yes. Dent corn? Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a type of, the silver is a type of sweet corn. Okay, so what's the growing season on the dent corn, what would you say? It's about 120 days. Very nice. But just like any time that you open one of these things, it's like, like Christmas, you don't know what you're going to get or if there's going to be even anything in there. Right, surprise. But the more colors, the uh, more healthier, I believe, that you're, you're, you'll be. So after you guys have harvested, what do you do with all this corn? This is a lot of corn. <laughs> do you eat all this yourselves? Uh, no, a lot of it we do, but some of it we dry and sell to the local uh, people that are in the area that they use it for uh, ceremonial soups and some of the peyote meetings and uh, I guess the feast and things that they have after a funeral or things like that. I myself really didn't know where the ornamental corn or the flint corn came from and we, but we couldn't find any and I went to town and bought some and my grandmother said, you silly kid, you can't eat that. They sprayed lacquer on it. You hang it up on your door. So, so the corn that you buy in town for Halloween decorations, be careful of it. Ask the stores if they've sprayed it with some kind of chemical. If they're asking you for $6 for three pieces of corn, it's, it'll last for a long time. <laughs> Don't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of love and a lot of time that's in this, and we make a little bit of money on it, but it ain't nothing uh, that uh, we're going to get rich off of. Right. Except uh, self. Right. Labor of love. Yeah. For sure. Well, great. Thanks, guys. Let's, uh, let's go see how that cornbread is doing back in the kitchen. This is some good-looking cornbread. It's fantastic. And the muffins, they just Beak autumn. Yeah, all that great color with the cranberries and you got the big chunks of apple in there. Whoa, shall we? So that's pretty successful. So you can put in whatever you want, be it nuts. Yeah, other fruits, maybe about, some nuts. What about pumpkin? Oh, you bet. Thank you for joining us. And don't forget, Baking at high altitude. It's available, like I said, for free and for you to print out on the on our website. You can type in Google Eat Wyoming and it'll take you to it. If you need more information, contact your local county extension office. We are here to serve and we are located throughout the state. To make Southern style Indian cornbread at home, you'll need one and a third cups Indian cornmeal, one third cup unsifted all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of sugar, three fourths of a teaspoon double acting baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, one fourth of a teaspoon baking soda, three fourths of a cup buttermilk, one egg, two tablespoons of cooking oil. Preheat the oven to 425 degrees. Grease the bottom of an eight by eight pan Sift cornmeal, flour, baking powder, soda, salt, and sugar into a medium-sized mixing bowl. In a small bowl, beat the egg well with a fork and then stir in the buttermilk. Pour the egg and milk mixture into the cornmeal mixture. Stir with a fork until the meal mixture is just moistened. Quickly pour the batter into the greased pan. Spread the mixture evenly with a spatula. Bake for about 25 minutes or until golden brown. Cut the cornbread into squares and serve hot. Experiment with nutritious ingredients like apples, nuts, or pumpkin. Try using Indian cornmeal in your favorite recipes 